So, uh, so Mark, we got to wrap this up because I got I to get running here soon. Uh, well, what do you have to do? Go, go, well, we got to record the SmackDown go, go, review. Go, 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 then go, the champagne room. That's a cheap shot yes. right there. That's very dis- uh, edit that out and and uh and sanction him. By the way, we're gonna put sanctions sanction on him. Me. Yeah, we're gonna sanction you for, for those actions. So. Yeah, call my call my cell phone and leave a leave a message. Yeah. All right. Well, where can we find you? Uh, well, not the podcast anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, WXDX.com to hear my radio show. That's WXDX.com where you can hear it on iHeartMedia. Easy to find using the iHeartMedia app. You can read my sports columns at TrivLive.com. And like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be talking or, or writing about wrestling very much anymore. In fact, I hope not to. I, I just, uh, I've lost my taste for it. This was, this was an awful experience from beginning to end. And Glenn, you know that. And right. let me ask you guys a question before I go. And Glenn and Conan, you would know this, you know, because you know a lot of the other stories. Would you say within the context of everything that's happened and the way I was treated on the way out the door, Billy, chime in too, everybody, Feeney, would you say that I have taken the high road in this conversation? Well, the thing is, people don't know the real story. If they did, they would say that's, yes. But that's why I I'm still, asking yeah. you. I still, think, yeah. I still think he's taking the high road, yeah. Even if other yeah, things are Yeah, I think you're taking the high road. The guy buried you. I think you've just been basically just other than to, to telling the facts and not like, you know, you know, it is what it is. Billy, so, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm a person who's like lost a lot of money and, and jobs for just for just not buying my tongue. So I, I, I would just go out and say whatever. As soon as soon As soon as he put the tweet out, you took the high road already by by smoothing the situation out, and he was going to get what he wanted anyway. So as soon as he like treaded on your tweet, I think you have full license to do what you what you say, what you've said, and like I wouldn't be holding back now. Like if you've got stories, well, well, I mean, if it was me, I would be saying. It. Yeah, but he's do been think, he's been friends with him for think- decades, though. Go ahead, Feeney. I'm sorry. No, same, but I understand what Billy's saying, but also Mark's been friends with him for decades, so maybe he doesn't want to say certain things because he that's still exactly values right. the friendship. That's, that's, and I Look, I just, like I, just, I just, I just, I just want to say this, Mark. <clears throat> I've had a very acrimonious relationship with Ric Flair when we first met because I grew up idolizing him. When I first met him, I did not like him. Um, he did a couple things when I was in WWE that I thought were f-ed up, and in WCW, nevertheless. As you grow older, you become mellower and you turn the page. And like the last time he was in Mexico, we had a really probably the best conversation we ever had. And 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 I was in a better place with him. But I was going to say, because he le- you left, uh, he left when you came in. But you, the Max Moon had a different name first, right? Something Kid. I forget what it was. Comet Kid was uh, one of them. Comet Kid. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he he actually tried to throw me, bro. Just so you know, I was backstage with my boss, and he tried to get us kicked out of the f- uh, auditorium uh, in WWE when my boss went there to talk with Vince McMahon. You know, and I was that's f- shady. And anyways, so um, uh, and other f- that he did. So, but you know, as you get older, you just learn to let f- go. No, you no, Tony, I, I agree with that. But but I just want to say this. I just want to say this because you were asking me if you took the high road. I just feel, okay, and if you're wrong, you know, I'll tell you you're wrong, Mark, and we can keep it moving. But at the end of the day, from, you know, knowing the story, okay, um, uh, if he was really your friend after 30 years, that's no way to treat a friend. And not only that, you lost a grip of money too. Yeah, but he told me that he wasn't my friend in that voicemail. Yeah. Right, that's f***ed up. That's what I'm Every- saying. That's f***ed up. He, that's, he, he, that's, regrets, he probably regrets that too, though. But yeah. here's the thing, okay? I agree when you're older, you have to let stuff go. But this just happened sat- This just happened Sunday night, okay? Right. I'll give you an example. I, I had a bad relationship with DDP for years. Right. Because he got me fired from WCW. He did. He'll never admit that. But he did. I know he didn't. And, and you know, but, but, but a couple years ago, maybe four or five years ago, Sean Waltman, who I trust implicitly, who's a great guy. Right. Uh, he said, 100% he said, agree. He said, dude, are you and Paige still beefing? Life's just too short. And he's right. So when I ran into Paige at one of Conrad Thompson's things, we kind of kissed and made up. And we're cool now, I think. Okay. Right. But, but this just happened on Saturday. And, Didi, and not only that, DDP's changed a lot too. Yeah. So, you know, so, but, but like, I just feel like I don't want to really dig deep and, and, and put it this way. Glenn, you've known me, you know, better than anybody else here in the panel. When it comes time to travel the low road, who travels it best? 
that can send you the worst guy in the world to pick a fight with. That's, yeah. Which is why you taking the high road is the best thing that could happen to Ric Flair. And he should just he should take the high road from this point forward because you're literally the worst guy to start a fight with on social media. So uh, worst guy to start a fight with, period. Period, yeah. Because then you have the radio because you've radio too. Ask Bill Watts. <laughs> ask Bill Watts. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. But but the, but the point is, is that I'd rather not, but I will. And now the ball's in his court. I have no desire to be friends with him ever again because it wasn't fun for the last 10 or 15 years. In fact, it was embarrassing and exhausting. But if he lets it go, I'll let it go now, except for casual conversations like we've had here. But but that story you guys both know, Conan and Disco, I have four or five more just like it. Mm. Jeez. <laughs> cool. That's tremendous. All right, my brother. It's always great having Thank you. Thank you, guys. Great show. to talk to you guys. Billy, All right. Liverpool to warm up. Come on, let's be civil. And we'll bring you for our six hundredth our six hundredth show. Uh, we'll have you back on again. Oh, wait, one last before I let Billy, <laughs> before I let, before I let Billy go. Uh, you know, I, I believe it or not, I'm famous enough in Pittsburgh, Glenn knows, where I do appearances and sign pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, it, and like an 11-year-old kid came up to me wearing a Man United kit. And he goes, will you sign a picture for me? And I go, yeah, are you a Man United fan? He goes, oh, yeah, I love Man United. So I signed the picture to whatever his name was, Jimmy. Uh, and I put down um, Man United 0, Liverpool Football Club 5, Old Trafford. I dated it from early this season and signed my name. I go, here you go, kid. Remember this forever. <laughs> Good troll. Then again, the United could disrupt my hopes and dreams in the near future. And I'm, I'm really aware of what fragile can be. Guys, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. This could be my last wrestling podcast ever. It won't. 